Adults, please turn to chapter 3 in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 3 in the Gospel of Matthew, and we are jumping all the way up into the adult life of Jesus now. Amen. Chapter 2, we saw his birth, and then the next chapter, we just go right into his adult life. Hallelujah. And so we see John the Baptist, the forerunner of the Lord Jesus Christ, coming and preparing the way of the King of kings and Lord of lords. Amen. Amen. The title of the message today, this morning, will be The Mantle of Elijah, John the Baptist. The Mantle of Elijah, John the Baptist. Amen. All right, let's, let's uh, read the scriptures. In those days came John the Baptist, preaching in the wilderness of Judea, and saying, Repent ye. For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For this is he that was spoken by the prophet Isaiah saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his path straight. And the same John had his raiment of camel's hair and a leathern girdle about his loins, and his meat was locust and wild honey. Then went out to him <coughs> Jerusalem, and all Judea and all the region round about Jordan, and were baptized of him in Jordan, confessing their sins. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees come to his baptism, he said unto them, O generation of vipers, who hath warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bring forth therefore fruits meet for repentance. And think not to say within yourselves, we have Abraham to our father. For I say unto you, that God is able of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. And now also the axe is laid unto the root of the trees. Therefore every tree which bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance... But he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and fire. Whose fan is in his hand, he will thoroughly purge his floor, gather his wheat into the garner. But he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. Then cometh Jesus from Galilee to Jordan unto John to be baptized of him. But John forbade him, saying, I have, in, I have need to be baptized of thee, and comest thou to me? And Jesus answered and said unto him, Suffer it to be so now, for thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he suffered him. Then Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water, and lo, the heavens were opened unto him. He saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lightning upon him. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your mighty word today. Pray for your inspiration to preach it, God, to declare it, to hear it, to receive it. It's already anointed, Father. We thank you this morning for what you're going to do in advance. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Again, the title of the message this morning, the, uh, the Mantle of Elijah and John the Baptist. Amen. In those days came John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For this is he that was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Let's go to Isaiah, please. Isaiah chapter 40. And we see the scripture, the text that is being fulfilled. And we told you last Sunday morning about how scripture is being fulfilled in the word of God here. As Matthew is declaring to Israel that Jesus is the true king. And the fulfillment of the Old Testament scriptures. So they had been anticipating him uh, when he would come. And now he has come on the scene. 
And John is the herald or the one that is announcing the arrival of this great king. Amen. In Isaiah chapter 40, the Bible tells us this prophecy. Amen. Beginning with verse 1. Comfort ye, comfort ye my people, saith your God. Speak ye comfortably to Jerusalem and cry unto her that her warfare is accomplished, that her iniquity is pardoned, for she hath received of the Lord's hand double for all her sins. Verse 3. The voice of him that crieth in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for who? Our God. So that when Jesus comes into the world, he is God come in the flesh. Amen. And so the scripture in Matthew uh, chapter 3, amen, right? Tells us, verse 3, For this is he that was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah, saying the voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his path straight. If you'll notice something very interesting, the prophet Isaiah has 66 books in it. This is the 40th chapter. Prophet Isaiah has 66 chapters. Excuse me. This is the 40th chapter, Isaiah 40. And verse 3 is the prophecy. And then Matthew is what book in the Bible? It's the 40th book in the Bible. Verse 3 of the 40th book of the Bible, talks about the fulfillment of the prophecy. So the scripture is very interesting. In, in the prophet Isaiah, each one of those chapters in Isaiah parallels a book in the Bible. So Isaiah 1 parallels the book of Genesis, Isaiah 2, Exodus, so on and so forth. So that the 40th chapter speaks of a prophecy. And then the 40th book in verse 3 speaks of the fulfillment of that prophecy. So that Isaiah is a miniature Bible. Amen. And so the Bible tells us that John comes and he is called the Baptist. Now that doesn't mean he is a Baptist denominationally. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. That's what he was known as because he baptized people in water. He immersed them in water. So they called him John the Baptist or John the Baptizer. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Very unusual name, unique name. Normally you would name the son sometimes after the father. His father was Zechariah. And we see that in the Gospel of Luke. But the scripture tells us that God told uh, them to, be, to name him John. And then when Zechariah came out of the temple and wrote down, said, you call his name John. The Bible says, they said, none of thy kindred is called by this name. Amen. And so John, very unique name, Yaakov, uh, the scripture tells us he is the Baptist, the one who preaches and the one who baptizes people. And the scripture says he preaches in the wilderness of Judea. So when we look at his life, uh, amen, he comes in out of the wilderness. He comes out of a unique place. Why is that? Why would God have him come preaching out of the wilderness? Why is that focused on in the prophecy and then focused on in the fulfillment? Why the wilderness? Why the desert? Praise the Lord. Well, there's a new exodus taking place. And God is pointing you back to uh, the exodus and the wandering in the wilderness. And so John is coming and he's declaring that the king is coming and there's going to be a new exodus that he is bringing redemption to the people of God. Also, because of the character of John, the location of his ministry. He is a separated man. Amen. He's separated from the world. He's separated from the ways of the world. He's separated from the thinking of the world. He is dedicated and separated unto God for the ministry so he lives in that place of refuge and he lives in that place of separation so that when he comes to preach the gospel, amen, he doesn't represent the world. He is a separated man. He is a man that's full of conviction. Amen. 
It's as if he comes out of nowhere like Elijah the prophet. In fact, he's wearing the mantle of Elijah. Literally wearing the mantle of Elijah when he comes. Amen. And so this very godly man, very separated man, separated from the world, comes out of the wilderness. He begins to preach. The Bible says he preached repentance. He says, repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And that word re re repent, you know, we know oftentimes we talk about repentance means a change of mind and a change of direction. But really it's more than just that. It's more that John's not just coming into the world. He's not just telling everybody, hey, you need to change the way you think. Although that is correct. Amen. He's telling them, make a complete turn. Shuv in the Hebrew, turn completely over to God. He's not just, have, not just telling them to think differently. He's telling them there should be a completely, totally change in your life. Your life should be completely changed. Say completely changed. It's not a little bit. He's looking for a total, not 360 degrees. Okay, repentance is not 360 degrees because if you do 360 degrees, you just end up back where you were. Repentance is in 100, 180 degrees. That means you are completely turning, say completely, completely turning away from your old way of living. And you're going to live in a completely different way than you've ever lived before. If you don't, it, see, repentance is not just, well, just turning a little bit. And living like you always have. Not in the Bible. The Bible means when you get ready to repent, there is a complete turning back to God. And a complete and total change of the way that you are living. And so this is what John comes preaching a, completely, a complete turning to God and a complete change of, what, of the way that you're living. And, and so that's the Bible repentance. If there is no change in my life, there is no change. If I keep living the same way that I always lived before I claim to be a Christian, I have not repented. Because shuv means completely turning to God and completely turn it away from the way that we used to live. Amen. And so he comes and preaches in that very unique place. Separation. Amen. Simplicity. Godliness. Not a worldly man, but a man of conviction. And he's preaching this turning unto God. He says, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. It's at hand. That means it's near. And who's it in? Because Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the King of Israel, has come in fulfillment of the prophets. And uh, John is saying the kingdom of God is at hand. It's in Jesus Christ, the spiritual kingdom of God. And so prepare, amen. Look at your neighbor and say prepare for the coming of the Lord. And so they are to repent, a total change of the way they're living, total turn to God. And verse 3 says, For this is he that was spoken by the prophet Isaiah, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness. He's the voice. Jesus is the Word. The voice of one crying where? In the wilderness. And what's he saying? Prepare ye the way of the Lord. Amen. That's God, of course. So he's preparing the way of Jesus, who is God. Amen. Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Now, so he's a herald. He's announcing the coming of the king. In those days, you don't have newspapers. You don't have cell phones. You don't, you know, you don't have computer. You don't have the internet. You don't have mail. You've got to have somebody that's a herald that goes out and announces the news. And this is what John is doing. He's announcing the news that the king is coming. Praise God. Amen. And he's coming out of the wilderness. A very unique place. Where there's no cell phones. There's no computers. There's no microwaves. It's a completely, totally separated life. Amen. And he comes preaching. He says, prepare ye the way of the Lord. That's what he is doing. He's preparing the way. 
So the high places, the herald would come, and he would announce the king is coming. And what they would do in that culture is if there were high places, they would bring them down. If there were low places, they would fill them in. If there were crooked places, they would straighten them out. They would get all the rocks out of the way because the king's coming. And so what John is saying is you repent, you do a complete turning back to God, turn away from your old lifestyle. He says what's going to happen is you need to level, amen, the high places of your life, get rid of pride. You need to fill in the low places of your life, hallelujah. You need to get rid of the crooked stuff out of your life because the king is coming. Nobody for 400 years had heard a prophet speak like this. Between Malachi and Matthew, 400 silent years. That means during that time, there was no prophet that came and preached like this man. Amen. There was no inspired scripture that was written. And here he comes with a loud, booming voice. Amen. And Israel was looking for an Elijah to come to come before the great and notable day of the Lord. Malachi chapter 4. So they were looking for Elijah to precede Jesus when he would come. And here he comes with this bo- booming brass throat voice, powerful, strong lungs. Hallelujah. He didn't need a microphone like me. And he preached in the wilderness, and people left Jerusalem, left Judea, and they went out in the wilderness of Judea, and they heard him preach. Amen. Away from all the control of man so that he could preach the word of God to man in that place. Hallelujah. Who knows? We may have to end up going and doing something like that in the future the way things are going right now I'm very disappointed in the Supreme Court because they voted five to four uh, just the other day Judge Roberts made the final vote and I'm very very disappointed in him and that the, to give the governors the ability to limit how many people can meet in a congregation I am extremely disappointed and more, more, more than that, I am really concerned that persecution is not only coming, it's already here for the church. So ultimately, I don't know what we'll end up doing or having to do in the future, praise God. Amen. But we may have to go out into the wilderness somewhere. And I'm not saying we are. Don't get afraid. Because I know that means you'll have to leave your cell phones home and you won't be able to. Okay, I know, I know. But I don't know what's going to happen. I'm just telling you. That as far as the world is concerned in the United States of America now, we're moving down a path that's not good. It is really not good. Amen. And I'm not saying that they voted that uh, for any reason. But under the certain situation, uh, they said that the governor of California has that right to do that. We're living in serious times. And I sounded a trumpet when this whole thing started out. I sounded a trumpet to watch out for that. Because they're trying to take your freedoms away. They're trying to take your religious rights away. And now you got the highest court in the land behind it. See, John went out of the wilderness. He preached. He got away from all of that dignity. Dignitaries. All of those rulers. Anybody that would try to control the preaching of the Word of God. He got away from that. They had to go to Him in that very unique place. The separated man, a godly man. The Bible says he comes crying. The Israelites believed that when Elijah would come, that he would be so loud, his voice would be so loud that the whole world would hear it. And obviously that's not true, but this is the kind of man that he had. When when you heard him preach, it startled you. It called you to a changed life. He called you to repent. He called, amen, praise God. And then Jesus comes on the scene. You know what he does? You know how he starts his ministry? He preaches the same message. Repentance. Amen. So this man didn't fit into the culture. He didn't fit into the world. He didn't fit into the, to the aristocrats of, of Jerusalem. He was not accepted by them. He was a God-called man separated. And he comes preaching that way with a booming voice that would startle you when you heard him preach. Amen. And so the Bible says in verse 3, the same John had his raiment of camel's hair and a leather girdle was about his loins and his meat was locust and wild honey. When you look at a man by the name of Elijah, amen? Elijah the prophet. How many of you ever heard of Elijah the prophet? <laughs> Elijah was known for the way he dressed. 
He had a talit, a mantle. The Bible calls it. Amen. A raiment of camel's hair and a leather girdle. When Elijah came preaching, of which John is a picture, because Jesus said that John came in the spirit and power of Elijah. When Elijah came preaching, you could distinguish him by the apparel that he wore. He also came out of the woods. He also came out of, out of, it seemed as, out of nowhere, just like John. And when he came, Elijah wore a certain kind of apparel, a mantle or a talit. And it was made out of camel hair. And he had a leather girdle. And when you saw Elijah come, Jewish writers, when they talk about Elijah, they said he had so much light in him. He was so righteous before God, had so much light in him that he would expose your sin if you even got in his presence. And so that presence of God that was in Elijah's life, when he came preaching, you know, remember the widow, the Bible talks about, I believe it's the widow, no, I'm going to say she's a widow, but uh, the one that lost her son to death, you know, she says, you've come to bring my sin to remembrance. See, that's the kind of man he was. He was so holy and so righteous in his life that when he came, that light that he walked in caused everybody to feel like their sin was being uncovered. Amen. Say praise God. And when Elijah came, you know, the way he dressed in that talit and that uh, leather girdle and that camel hair mantle also told you that he was a prophet of God. Now, I don't know where he got the mantle. I don't know who prepared it for him. But Elijah, when he came, he had a mantle. And there's a man by the name of Vendel Jones. He is the true Jones, the true Jones of the ark that was being looked for. Y'all ever seen any of those movies, the Raiders of the Lost Ark? I have. I've seen a few of those. And Indiana Jones, you know, he's the guy that's supposed to be the one finding the Ark of the Covenant, right? Looking for it. I don't know if you know this, but there was a real Jones, but his name wasn't Indiana. It's Vendel Jones. And I'm not sure if he's still alive, but he literally was looking for the Ark of the Covenant. And the Raiders of the, La Ra Raiders of the Lost Ark was made after that, the story of Vendel Jones. Okay, so anyway, make a long story short, Vendel Jones... He went and studied with the rabbis for seven months about this mantle, this talit of Elijah. Seven months. And I have a series where he speaks about this. Seven months he went over there to Jerusalem. And they sat down for seven months with the rabbinic scholars. And they studied the talit of Elijah. And they said that Elijah's talit had the names of God the name of God on it, and it was in the shape of a tri triangle, yod Hey vav Hey, And it was in the shape of a triangle so that no matter what direction he was coming or what direction you would come, you could always distinguish the name of God in that camel hair talit or mantle. Amen? And so he comes on the scene, the Bible says, and he preaches repentance, turning the people back to God. And then when he goes away, the Bible tells us another man by the name of Elisha, he ends up with the mantle of Elijah. Y'all remember that? I mean, he would not let the clothes, he would not let loose of the clothes, remember, of Elijah? Elijah said, you stay here. Elijah said, no, I'm going with you. Elijah said, you stay here. He said, no, I'm going with you. The point is, he would not let go of that mantle. Because El Elisha wanted the mantle of Elijah. And so the Bible tells us what Elijah told Elisha. He says, if you see me when I go up, amen, you can get this mantle. He said, but you've asked a hard thing. And you know the long story, right? The Bible tells us that the chariot of God came, took Elijah up. Elisha looks up and see Elijah going up into the heaven. He says, my father, my father. And here comes that mantle. And Elisha picks it up. And he throws it together. And he smites the water. And he says, where is the Lord God of Elijah? He smites the water, the water divides. Amen. Y'all remember the story? So who had the mantle of Elijah then? Elisha did. But it's a little bit different from Elijah. Amen. Eliyahu Hanavi. Eliyahu Hanavi. He comes as a prophet. Elijah comes as a prophet like a thundering prophet. 
In fact, his name, Eliyahu Hanavi, sounds like thunder. The Bible tells us when Elisha picks up that mantle, he's not Eliyahu Hanavi. He's not like a prophet that speaks like thunder and lightning. He comes as a prophet with a still, small voice. What does that mean? 